Welcome back. You're listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by NEC Corporation on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guest today is Russ Roberts, the Transportation Security Administration's Chief Information Officer. Now, Russ, before break, we were talking a little bit about the idea of helping the mission areas ensure they have what they need and make sure it will work. It's not just a matter of saying, here's the technology we want to buy, whether it's something in the touchless technology or the identity vetting area or, or whatever it is, you still have to make sure it works on your network. And that involves discussion, communication, as you said. So let's talk a little bit about how you work with other CXOs at TSA. How do you ensure that not just you have a seat at the table, but your voice is heard, understood, and you all are moving together as, as, in as much lockstep as possible? Yeah, thanks, Jason. That's a great question. Well, one of the, one of the things that I think is so critical for a CIO to do is Besides all the meetings that we're in and uh, talking about all of the different things that initiatives that are going on in the agency is also to get out there and, and make sure you're, you're a good collaborator, a, a good team member with all the other, all the other leads, whether that's a CFO, if you're a CIO and you don't have a really good relationship with the CFO, you know, you can get yourself into trouble. The same thing with all of my, uh, you know, my counter, my other or organizations or offices at, at my level, it's really important to go seek them out. Uh, you know, as, as, and I kind of mentioned it earlier that the CIO is really someone I envision. We're a customer service organization. We're there to help. And, you know, if we can get out there and have those conversations before their conversations about, will you let me do this or do that? You're better off. So to get out and have those conversations, if the administrator, if I, uh, if I'm in a meeting that or not in a meeting, the administrator has pushed something, normally someone will call me and tell me that this is going on, gives me an opportunity to find out more about it. And likewise, you, you want to be a valued customer. If there's something new going on or I'm getting ready to do something, I don't want them to see it in an email that I'm shutting the system down over the weekend. I want to give them time to react and those things. And I think, uh, you know, I've been at TSA 16 and a half years, and I think that's, you, you get to know the people that do that, that do that well. And as a CIO, it's really critical because you're involved in everything. You can't do anything in an agency without, without IT being involved. I mean, we have some role in everything. Um, so, you know, when I'm not surprised, that's a good thing. And really, it's, 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 I take it on myself as a CIO to go out and try not to be surprised. Go out and sit down. And it's hard now with COVID. I, I don't get to walk up and, and, and just stop by somebody's office. So you have to make, uh, you know, I think we're all working harder these days or we're on more meetings to, to get on the phone and just, hey, how you doing? I think that's really important. I think it makes things work much better. And when you do have a problem, um, everybody knows how to communicate. And I think that's, that's critical for a CIO today. Do you have a sense about how big of a problem shadow IT is for TSA? You, you, generally speaking, TSA is a fairly new organization. You've been around 17 years or so. So hopefully not, you don't have a lot of shadow IT, but I know it's easy for it to pop up. Well, that's, you know, so that's part of my, my visits. You know, what, what are you doing? Some of them aren't so, aren't so innocent on my part. I think we, we've gotten a pretty good handle on it, but you know, today you buy a, you buy a, a coffee maker uh, out in a checkpoint somewhere and it's, and it's and you're connected to some network somewhere. Uh, normally my sock will see that and it'll light up and we'll ask them what, what they think they're doing. But um, you know, the ITAR process is pretty effective. You can't spend a dollar without it going through my, my group and at the end of the day, myself or my deputy signing off that you can spend the money, whether it's IT or not. Uh, you get a lot of, oh, don't worry about this, this is an IT, but yet there's a database that has sensitive data. No, that's, that's IT. So it's a challenge, uh, and I don't think people necessarily do it in a nefarious way, but we've got a lot of, a lot of folks, especially out in the field, they're very, uh, you know, they're uh, doers, you know, they, they want to get something done, and, and so they have their own, uh, own operation out there, and if they need something by gosh, they're going to go out and buy it. So this is a bit of a challenge. Uh, um, but so what we try and do is make sure our, my customer folks are reaching out to them frequently enough, and we educate them as best we can, and we minimize uh, that type that type of thing. You never you never really eliminate it, but I think we've made some good improvement over the last few years on that. I love your coffee pot example. It's so true. Uh, I hear this all the time, and you see it all the time in your personal life. The IoT device, the connected device, whatever we're calling it these days they're everywhere and, and they're, it's only going to increase. So I imagine that, as you said, you're, as long as your sock and your, your knock are, are seeing it, you can, you can try to stay ahead of it. One of the things is related to understanding the 
working with your CXOs and the mission areas is really the, the services you provide to citizens, to customers. TSA is a customer facing, a citizen facing organization as much as the IRS, as much as SSA, as much as many others. You mentioned a few of the changes or a few things you guys are starting to look at and consider. Are there other areas that you're really focusing on the citizen services? And again, I'll go back to whether it's in the digital identity world or sometimes identity vetting to make that process go better. I think we all have had the, uh, I'll call it a little bit of frustrating experience at TSA, some better than others, but you know, how to make it happen more seamlessly. That's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> so let, let me take it. First of all, let me say, as far as TSA goes, I think we are, uh, from my perspective, pretty much the face of the U.S. government. Now, right now, it's a little unique. I mentioned that we're down, I think we're getting back to about 50% of the traveling public. But on a normal day, we would, we would, we would interact with 2.2 million travelers a day. Uh, no other agency comes anywhere close to that. Um, so in a, in a large way, we're very focused on that experience, that customer experience. Uh, our number one mission is security and making sure that those, whether they're flights or whatever other areas that we, we secure, are as secure as can be. That's our top mission. We're not, we're not trying to speed you through. What we're trying to do is make sure prohibitive items don't get into the checkpoint and make it, make it safe for you. But, but having said that, we definitely are looking, whether it's COVID or not, to improve you know, our ability to make sure we catch fake documents and fake those things. We've gotten very, very good at that. We think there's another step of improvement to be made with touchless technologies, checkpoint, use of biometrics. And I talked a little about uh, mobile driver's license. Those things are in the future. They work. Um, and we're definitely exploring those. Uh, um, you know, the things I'll talk about, they're not all ready to, I'm not ready to plug them in at a, at a checkpoint. We're still doing a lot of testing and evaluation um, on those things, but they are, we believe they're in the future, um, that those things you'll be able to come up and touchlessly get through, um, you know, get into your screening, screening lane at the airport without having to uh, touch anything or hand anybody anything or anything like that. I talked a little about pre-check enrollment uh, you know, through mobile technologies. Our air cargo team, uh, anything, any air cargo that's going to go on a, on a passenger plane or, or, or a cargo plane, uh, TSA is responsible to make sure that cargo is safe. There's some systems that we have out there that we're trying to replatform so that they're much more efficient and effective and they're, they're more real time. Um, they kind of existed from the beginning of TSA when we did things uh, uh, right away. So we've been improving those. I think it's now time to make uh, a huge jump in technology in some of those areas, and we're doing that now. Uh, our transportation redress program, if you're someone who's come in and you have difficulties when you get through and they seem to be constant, we have a redress program. We're trying to modernize that a little bit. I think we get pretty good marks on that, but we found that that's an area because enough people are involved in that. We want to streamline that and make it the best customer experience that we can uh, while still making sure the security is in place for, for the folks. So those are some of the things that we're working on. And I think that touch of stuff at the checkpoints are things that you're, you all are gonna see um, you know, in the near future. Russ, a lot to look forward to coming up, a lot of the, in, in the citizen services world. So I'm sure it's something we'll check back in with you in the near future. So let's take a quick break. We, we can come back, we can, can finish up our conversation. My guest today is Russ Roberts, the Transportation Security Administration's Chief Information Officer. I'm Jason Miller, and you're listening to Ask the CIO, sponsored by NEC Corporation on Federal News Network. 